Model steam engines, top tip time, part 67. To make this series I spent quite a lot of time searching for video clips and I found this series, the Stuart No. 4 model steam engine restoration. This contains a lot of useful tips. All edited using part 1 of the series. This Stuart No. 4 was finally built onto a baseboard driving a generator and supplied with steam from a Stuart 504 boiler. I'm going to show how I moved the flywheel key sufficiently to allow me to fit a screwdriver blade behind it to remove it from the crankshaft. The first part to be removed is the flywheel, so I need to extract the key. This key is a very tight fit and I couldn't get a screwdriver behind it, so I'm using a Stanley knife blade, and at this point I will immediately put in a health and safety warning. If you're doing a job like this, be very careful. I'm holding the blade with a pair of pliers, and tapping it very gently and I'm wearing a pair of safety glasses because if this blade shatters you could have a major problem. But it didn't shatter because I was very delicate with the hammer. And now I can first of all get a small screwdriver blade behind the key followed by a larger one. And by doing this and once again being very gentle I don't mark the flywheel and I don't mark the key. Whenever you make the small metal key that holds these parts together, it's a good idea to put a slight angle on this part of the key that I'm pointing out with the screwdriver. That way you can get a screwdriver point straight in without having to use a Stanley knife blade. And now, being very grateful that the flywheel hasn't been loctited to the crankshaft, I can remove it easily. The next thing to do is to just give everything a wipe over with a cloth to get rid of most of the old oil and the grime. Even though this old Stuart No. 4 steam engine looks a bit horrible, it isn't. It's really well made. It was made by a proper engineer by the looks of it. The bearing fits are almost perfect. And the flywheel is a very good fit on the crankshaft also. What I'm doing at the moment is tipping quite a lot of white spirit into a plastic container. Now please bear in mind I normally use cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner as it's called in the USA, but in this case I don't want to remove the paint. The lining on the steam engine has been hand painted, so I want to keep that. I'm using the white spirit to remove any oil and any grime and any loose flaky paint that may be on the engine. I'm only going to paint the parts of this engine that need painting. If you look at the engine behind this one, which is a 5A, you may notice that it's the identical colour to this one. Now this is an old engine, so I don't know what colour it was in the first place, but it looks very, very close to the 5A behind it and I have some of that paint left. And just for reference, the paint colour is British Railways Loco Green. As I continued working my way through the oil and grime, I noticed that the eccentric sheave and the eccentric strap were also varnished. The varnish on these parts will be removed in due course. So that's the bottom half of the engine done, now to look at the top half, the cylinder. And the first thing I'm doing is taking off the exhaust flange. Here it is and this will then allow me to remove the cladding, starting with the two bolts on the left hand side, and thankfully these two bolts unscrewed very easily, which is not always the case. Now round to the front, and I unscrew the drain cocks, followed by removing the two screws from the other side of the cladding. Now the piece of cladding has been removed, I'm brushing some white spirit onto the cylinder to get rid of any oil and grime that may be on there. And once I've removed all of the cylinder bolts, I can remove the cylinder cover. I would think this engine looked really good when it was first made, with its nice green paint, hand lining and varnished bright parts, but now as you can clearly see in this clip it's in a bit of a sorry state. But never mind, very soon it will be put back to how it was when it was new. I got a comment from a viewer and the viewer said, why are you dismantling the engine because it works perfectly? Well yes it does, it works very well indeed, but after putting all of the time and effort into the 504 plant, I cannot live with this rusty mess sat on the same baseboard. In this clip I'm just slopping some more white spirit in the steam chest, and now I'm removing the eccentric rod from the valve fork. I'm using a craft knife and this very small hammer to just separate the steam chest from the main cylinder block. And once again, if you're hammering on high tensile blades, you must wear eye protection because if the blade shatters, the parts will fly all over the place. Once I broke the seal it was easy to remove the steam chest and now I'm doing exactly the same with the cylinder cover. And now that is also loose. The steam cylinder top cover is rustier on the outside than it is on the inside. In this clip I'm using some white spirit 
to just clean up the cylinder bore so I can have a close look at it. And the cylinder bore is like glass. This engine really is very well made. As a bit of a quick test to see how easy it's going to be to remove this varnish, I'm using a piece of green scotch bright dipped in white spirit. I'll put the spelling on screen just in case you can't tell what I'm saying. scotch bright is a bit like a scouring pad, but a bit more tenacious. Up till now you've seen me applying the white spirit to the engine using a soft paintbrush. And the soft paintbrush has been okay for getting rid of most of the grease and some of the grime on the paintwork. But now I need to get serious and get in the corners, particularly around the bolts, so I'm using a toothbrush for this. With the help of a pair of pliers, once again being very gentle, I don't want to mark the parts, I'm removing the studs that hold the steam chest to the main cylinder block. And what's the port face like? Well, it's just as it was machined, it's not been ground down at all. But to be fair, the valve doesn't blow, so it's great. I'm not going to do anything that I don't need to do with this engine. So where are all the gaskets? I haven't come across any gaskets on this engine, but to prevent any leaks, when I put it back together, I will be making some new gaskets for it. This varnish is going to be difficult to remove. I don't know what it was originally, but it's very tenacious stuff. It's just not very good as a barrier against water. In this clip, I'm using a very sharp blade to scrape off any residue from the mating surfaces as well as the last of the varnish from the top of the steam chest part of the cylinder casting. And in this clip, I'm scraping the port face. And now I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper to just shine up the top of the cylinder block. You will notice that there is a cloth pushed into the cylinder bore and this is to stop any grit from entering the cylinder bore and causing damage. But, to be perfectly honest, as you probably know by now, the first steam that contacts the cylinder condenses to water, and the mixture of copious amounts of water and quite a lot of steam will clean the cylinder bore very effectively, and any particles of grit or debris that are in the cylinder will be blown out of the drain cocks. After emptying the white spirit out of the container, I refilled it with some cellulose thinners. Apparently, it's very nasty stuff, some viewers tell me, but I've used it for years, and I still have both of my hands, and I haven't started glowing in the dark yet. This is a flywheel, and it's a red flywheel. Now, in my opinion, red flywheels look really good on mammoth steam engines. If it's on a mammoth steam engine, it needs to be red. If it's on a Stuart model steam engine, I personally do not like red flywheels. It's going to be green, the same colour as the engine. My preference, some people may disagree with it, but green engine, green flywheel. The builder of this engine, a Mr T Lightfoot, who built this engine apparently in 1974, put his name and the date on it. When I first tried to adjust the valve, because the valve timing was just a fraction out, I couldn't move the eccentric sheave on the crankshaft and I realised that it had been loctited in place, so I had to warm up the crankshaft at that side to break the bond between the eccentric sheave and the crankshaft. And even after that, as you can see here, the eccentric sheave is still quite a tight fit on the crankshaft and needed tapping off with a piece of brass bar. By the way, if you have the same problem that you have a part that's loctited on and you need to remove it, you don't need to heat the part excessively. Just heat it sufficiently to release the bond. Do not try and heat the components to red heat. It's really not necessary. That's about it for this episode. I'm putting the eccentric sheave and the eccentric strap together into the cellulose thinners, and hopefully in time for the next episode, all of the paint will have dissolved and I can remove it easily. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.